people to know how bad I felt on the inside. And, um, you know, on the outside, everything looked great. Everything looked like everything was working perfectly. And so I didn't want anybody to know. So because I didn't want anyone to know, I wasn't willing to admit it to anybody else. And I'm very grateful that I was able to get what we call a life and skills analysis where you have the two charts and you actually plot out where you are in the zones. And um, I was able to, then, then it became real. I was in the red zone. And um, then, of course, it was like, okay, well, now that somebody else knows that I'm sitting in the red zone, it's okay for me to shift into a different space because I actually don't like it. I don't want to be here and I want to change. And um, a lot of people are actually not willing to admit where they sit in the zones. They're not willing to actually acknowledge that I'm not in a great space. And purely because if they admit it to themselves, then they've got to admit it to other people. <laughs> and we really don't want other people to know when we're not in a great space. <laughs> And I think it's so important for us to start to get honest with ourselves, get real with ourselves, and actually start to acknowledge where we are. And um, today I want to talk a little bit around the difference between processing and are you being positively processed or are you being negatively processed? And are you positively processing the people in your environment or negatively processing them. And pretty much a process is just a series of um, steps that we go through. So in, in terms of it doesn't matter what you do, everything is, has a process to it. And when we look at processing, and um, processing is pretty much what we do is we just help people find the truth. We help people start to find the truth as to where they are, where they want to be, and find the truth in their life. And, um, yeah, as I mentioned, when I started um, with Advanced Coaching and Leadership Center, I was, like I say, down here in the bottom of the red zone, and I actually got what we call processing, which is just a series of one-on-one uh, -on -one time with a processor, which was somebody who just took me through a series of questions, just a process of questions to help me shift and put me in a space where I was able to find what it was that I truly wanted. And when I was able to find what I was, what it is that I wanted, I was able to go out and start creating that. And a lot of us are stuck in a space where we don't have a lot of energy. We don't know what it is that we want, and we're just stuck in survival. We go through the motions every single day, and we just hope that tomorrow will be better. We hope that business will be better. We hope that clients will, will come in. We hope that, you know, things will change. The government will change. We hope that, you know, the U.S. elections will get sorted out fast. <laughs> you know, all sorts of things. And we're kind of hoping, but we're not actually creating anything. We're not stepping out and doing anything. And a lot of times the reason for that is because we've had a negative process run on us. And we're not even aware of it. So an example of an how do you so let's let's start with how do you know if you've been negatively processed? So well the first one, does anyone want to type into the chat box, how do you know if you've been negatively processed? <laughs> so how it says depressed. Okay, anybody else wanna? Say any anything, how do you know if you've been negatively processed? What are some of the symptoms or signs that you have been negatively processed? Anybody else? Okay, so uh, Fiona says get triggered. Uh, Kirsten says you feel like you're on a roller coaster. Um, Yana says constant negative thoughts. So yeah, I, I mean, in terms of, of that, some of the key indicators are emotional responses. Okay, so these are some of the key indicators that you've been negatively processed. And uh, the atomic team says angry and feel stuck. Okay, so some of the key things that you know if you've been negatively processed. You are sick. <laughs> Anybody have a cold and flu? <laughs> you, you're being negatively processed. <laughs> You're unhappy, <laughs> so you have that down, upside down smile. You're unhappy. <laughs> You've been negatively processed. Um, 
nothing seems to be going right for you. You've been negatively processed. <laughs> uh, you're not producing the results you want. Um, your dreams are not becoming actualities. You are success reluctant. Uh, you are call reluctant. You're reluctant to reach out and make yourself known. Um, you are lonely. <laughs> you have money problems. <laughs> So, is there anybody on the call that's been negatively processed? <laughs> anybody have any of those, <laughs> those symptoms? <laughs> can, can you relate to any of those? So, pretty much, we've all been, at some point in our life, negatively processed. And one of the things is that, is that are you taking that negative processing and what are you doing with it? Are you aware that you're being negatively processed? Because a lot of people are not even aware that they've been negatively processed. A lot of people are not even aware when they've been positively processed. <laughs> and so one of the things today is just around if you want to have a happy, prosperous, successful life, one of the things you need to start doing is start positively processing yourself and those around you. And also being aware of when somebody's negatively processing you, when you're aware of it, now you have a choice. Do I take it on or do I, do I stop and go, oh, they're not in a great space. I don't need to take that on. So in business, we have clients that negatively process us. We have customers and um, suppliers that negatively process us. And we have a choice in those moments to decide if we're going to take on that negative processing, take on the emotion and, you know, just internalize it and put ourselves down here in the red zone where we're unhappy, we get sick, we have money problems, we can't make life work, we're call reluctant, we're reluctant to reach out, reluctant to talk to people. Or we can switch it around and say, okay, I'm not going to take that on, I'm going to you know, if that if I don't like that customer or the way that customer is treating me, am I going to go find another one? Am I going to find somebody else who's a more positive customer? Um, I've recently experienced. Um, uh, we have a training that we we've done. Sort of, um, I guess this would be the fifth one that we've done, and we use a venue, and the venue is absolutely beautiful. We love the venue. But the person that runs the venue is a nightmare. <laughs> and without fail, every single time I've gone to do a training there, in some way, shape, or form, the um, manager or the owner of those venues, of that venue, negatively processes me. And I go into those venues every single time, frustrated, irritated, <laughs> upset with, with the. Um, the person that owns the venue and it's i and i have a choice as to how i deal with that because i can say to her, i can go okay cool i know that i've got a training coming up the venue's beautiful it works amazing it works really really well for us and i i have a choice i can go okay cool well, I know that the owner or the manager of the venue is going to negatively process me. I'm going to get some snotty emails. I'm going to get some you know, in terms of you didn't follow the system. You didn't do what I say. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. Oh, sorry, I double booked your venue and now I've got to move you. And, and she tells me that every single time I've had to go, we've used the venue, but yet whenever we've arrived, she's given us the one that we wanted in the first place. <laughs> And so I have a choice. I can get upset. I can get frustrated. I can get irritated. I can take on all that stuff, which we call charge, which is going to put me in a really unhappy mood. <laughs> it will affect the, the people that I'm training. It will affect, you know, all sorts of things. Or I can go, okay, great. I know she's not in a great space. I know that she gets frustrated. She's not happy. And now I have a choice. I can take it on and I can go, Okay, I'm going to be in and go, you know what? I feel so sorry for you. 
your business must really be struggling if you have that kind of attitude with a regular client that supported you through lockdown. That was the only client that you had twice in four months. <laughs> and shame, you know, if, if that's the way you're going to treat your clients, wow, your business must really be struggling. And I can go, okay, great. Well, I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to make sure that we, we make it happen. And I'm not going to let that person negatively process me because now I'm aware of that's the behavior that I'm going to get. And is this making sense to all of you? <laughs> if this is making sense, type sense into the chat box. That would be great. If you're watching live or on Facebook or watching the replay, please type sense into the, into the chat box. We'd love to hear from you. And because it is important, I think this is a key thing. A lot of us are being negatively processed every single day. And the radio negatively processes us. <laughs> the newspapers negatively process us. All sorts of things every single day, those little negative things all the time negatively process us. And if we're not aware of it, it affects our mood level, it affects our outcomes, it affects our health, it affects our success, the ability to make money, the ability to find customers, the ability to, to reach out and connect to people. So, you know, are you aware of where that negative processing is coming from? And I mean, most of us are not. We get in the car and we drive to we, we drive to work and a taxi cuts in front of us. That taxi just negatively processed us because it cut in front of us. And we go turn into this monstrous road rage. <laughs> and yet the taxi driver is not even aware that they negatively processed us. They don't even care. They don't know who they upset. They just go, oh, well, sorry for you. You know, if you hoot and flashlights at them and whatever, they just go, you know, they, they give you the middle finger or they just drive off and ignore you or whatever it is. And we spend our day in a bad mood and frustrated and irritated because somebody cut in front of us instead of looking at it from the point of view, oh, wow, they're trying to negatively process me. <laughs> I can change that. I can say, you know what, things must be really tough in your world. <laughs> I get it. You have to get from A to B as fast as you can with as many people as you can in order to generate an income. And um, maybe your day's not going great. Okay, well, great. I'm not going to take that on. I'm not going to choose to allow that negativity to come into my space. And often, um, I think it was Fiona who said we get triggered. And when we get triggered, that's all that is is Basically, we're sitting in a in an upset and we're just waiting for somebody to pull the trigger on that upset for it to explode in. <laughs> and that's what pretty much what happens with the taxi driver. They drive in front of us, that's the trigger, and poof, we explode. And that's a, a an example that a lot of people relate to and a lot of people have experienced and have seen. But now, are you aware of those little triggers that come in when a customer comes in? And they say, I'm really sorry, I'm going to reduce my order by 50% <laughs> because I'm not doing that great. Are you aware of what that, that trigger and what's actually happening to you in that moment? Are you aware, does your mood shift? Does, or do you go, I'm so grateful that you still came to me and gave me the order for 50% instead of, you know, our mood level drops and goes, oh, are you aware of those triggers and what they are doing to your day, what they're doing to you? And are you aware of how you're responding to them? Because a lot of us, somebody will come in, they will upset us, trigger us, we'll get an email or something, it'll shift our mood level. And half the time, we're not even aware that that's, that's what's happening. We're not even aware that our mood level dropped. And a positive process would be for somebody to come and say to you, what happened? <laughs> you know, I noticed your mood level dropped. And that would be a really positive way. Why? Because it's going to help you find truth. It's going to help you find, oh, well, my mood level dropped. Actually, not because the client... <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm really disappointed that the client didn't give me, you know, the full order and they only gave me a 
But it actually reminded me of this incident, you know, three years ago. <laughs> That's what happened, actually. I got reminded of that. And as soon as we're aware of, ah, oh, now I've gone into my past and I've been triggered into my past, I'm no longer present, I'm no longer here, I'm no longer in the moment, and I've gone back into my past, and now I'm stuck in the past. And that's often what happens when we're being triggered. But a, a positive process would be what happened? Oh, wow, I realized I got stuck in the past. Okay, great, now I have a choice. I can choose to stay there, or I can choose to shift back to the positive and be in the moment here and now and be focusing on the future <laughs> because a lot of people get negatively processed and the reason why they get sick they get unhappy they can't study they can't train they become cold reluctant they feel lonely why because they're stuck they've been triggered into the past incident into that upset they're stuck there and they don't even realize that's where they're stuck and whereas a positive process would be, ah, I'm here, now I can shift and focus on the future. And I think it's important that everybody understands that that's what's happening every single day. We're getting negatively and positively processed. And often the people that are positively processing us are the ones that we actually avoid. <laughs> Why? Because they put truth in our life. <laughs> and the truth often is not always easy to face up to. <laughs> the truth is not always easy to acknowledge. <laughs> and sometimes it is painful to admit that I'm triggered into an upset in the past and I don't want to acknowledge that. So the people that are positively processing you in your life, are you aware of who they are? <laughs> And are you hanging on to them <laughs> and sticking around them and allowing them to positively process you? Because a lot of times there is more, um, we call it charge, so basically a lot more, <laughs> you're going to hit a lot more force when you shift into the positive. So an example would be um, I'm feeling really upset and I'm really sad and somebody asked me, you know, that they're trying to make me happy and lift my mood level, well, it's a lot harder for them to lift my mood level into the positive than it would be for them to lift to shift my mood level into the negative. And so because more often than not, if we go into the positive, we're triggering the negative. <laughs> so if I want to be happy. Every time I think of being happy, I'm triggering all the times I was happy and then got unhappy. All the negative things that happened. So every time I try and shift into the positive, I'm being reminded of all the times I lost the positive. <laughs> Instead of being focused on, well, it would be great to be in the positive just for a little bit, <laughs> if that's making sense. And if you would rather be in the positive, I'd love for you to type positive into the chat box. Because I think a lot of us would rather be in the positive, but we spend all our time in the negative. <laughs> and we can't understand why we're in the negative, but yet we avoid the positive people in our lives. So Hart says positive, Atomic positive, Fiona positive, Kirsten positive, Susan positive. Okay, awesome. So. Yeah, it is. And a lot of us want the positive, but we're not prepared to face up to the positive. <laughs> we're actually not prepared to put ourselves in the positive. And it's one of the biggest things is because we're not actually present in the moment. We're stuck in the past and the past upsets and all those past things that are happening instead of saying, I'm here now, what mood level do I want to be in? and running out some of those negative things. Um, one of the ways to run out some of the negative is actually to talk about it and talk about the moods that we were experiencing. Because a lot of people will say, they'll tell the story of the taxi driver that cut in front of them and cut them off and how it made them so mad 
but they won't actually talk about what actually happened. So I was driving along, I was in a really great space and I was super excited and I was listening to the, the radio and then suddenly this taxi driver cut in front of me and I had to slam on brakes and it gave me a fright <laughs> because I had to slam on brakes. And, you, you know, I, I kind of, it triggered and it reminded me of the time I had an accident. It reminded me of, you, you know, when I was five years old and my mom slammed on brakes and whatever. Instead of running through all those emotions, we just tell the story. When we start to talk about all the emotions that are connected to that, we actually can sort of unravel it, pull it out, and then go, ah, I was frustrated, I was irritated. Oh, I don't want to be frustrated and irritated. I actually want to be joyful and happy and smiley. <laughs> so then it's a lot easier to put yourself back into that state. And um, I'm really excited. We have Kirsten on the call with us today. Kirsten's a, a biokineticist, and she started the journey with us um, and working with me and Uncovering Greatness just over two years ago and um, started learning about processing. And so, Kirsten, would you mind introducing yourself? Sure. Thanks, Nicole. Um, yeah, so I'm Kirsten. I am, like Nicole said, a biokineticist. And um, yeah, I was searching for something to help shift my clients out of the same ruts that they're into and experiencing the same things and me having to take them through the same process. And also just really stuck in my own crap in life and stuck there in the, in the red zone. And um, Nicole introduced me to processing and that and it really shifted and helped me changed my perspective as to where I was at and gave me a lot of hope because I was like oh cool I can get out of this now I don't have to live life like this so it was really just a great way to get some perspective and um and to see where I was at and and to to start making some progress towards that so much so that I decided to join Nicole and learn how to become a processor so that's where I'm at at the moment and really thoroughly enjoying and grateful for the journey so thank you Thank you, Kirsten. And yeah, I just wanted to, as a biokineticist, you see a lot of the stuff in the physical world. So you see people yeah. negatively processing their bodies and then you see them positively processing their bodies and what the difference that it makes. So would you mind just sharing in terms of, you know, when your patients come to you, they generally have done a lot of negative processing on their bodies <laughs> and then your job is to start positively processing them. So maybe you could just yeah. share from a, what you observe from a physical perspective in terms of negative processing versus positive processing. Sure. So it's a yeah, very broad topic because people negatively process their bodies in so many ways. <laughs> and I mean, just from the perspective of, you know, eating really badly and then feeling really bad about themselves and creating the cycle of guilt, like I ate so badly and now I put on so many kilos and now I need to go and run for 10 kilometers and, you know, move this weight off instead of being like, I made a bad decision. I'm not a bad person because of it. I don't feel, I can't feel guilty about it for the rest of my life. And then start making those steps to positively process themselves into a better space. So like in that perspective with when it comes to eating, I've seen a lot of that when with diet and losing weight and that. And then and then the after effects of that, like people who end up with diabetes and high cholesterol and hypertension and all these things that they're experiencing because they made one decision and then ended up in this vicious cycle of negatively processing themselves because they made one bad decision, put on a little bit of weight and then, well, I've done that, so I may as well carry on and I'm a terrible person because of it. Or on the other hand, like um, I've actually been working with a, a patient recently who we were working on, on, on his knees and he's had some injuries to them. And actually today we figured out where the injury started and why they keep reoccurring. And it's because of like you're speaking about now, Nicole, the, the past incident that happened and the cycle he got stuck in. So whenever he reaches a level of success and it creates this positive environment and this positive result for him, he gets like stuck in that cycle again of negatively processing himself and ends up re-injuring himself. 
and um yeah and just by being aware of that he's like oh that's what i've been doing and this is how i can get out of it and he's already started making those steps towards positively processing himself and what he needs to do and it's helped me as his um as his biokineticist that i can now be like oh cool that's where it came from that's how we can fix it this is what he wants to do to get out of it and we can take this journey together and and walk i can walk with him and, and help him do that so yeah um, thank you so much for sharing. And just on that, um, by finding the incident that created the upset with his knees, how much of a difference have you seen in the patient since he found that upset just in a few short hours? <laughs> yeah I mean like you talk about mood level from being like down in the red zone and angry and frustrated and I can't move anywhere I'm stuck I'm not getting the results that I want to oh wow there's hope and like I know what I can do and I can take action and just immediately from being in the red zone right up into the green zone being happy and excited about the action he's going to take already um starting to make some plans on what he was going to do towards those things so um, yeah, just a lot, a lot more of a happy and excited client and someone who's willing to work positively with me and himself on getting the results he wants. Thank you. And I just love that example because that's exactly what happens with us on a mental, in a mental space because we get stuck in that cycle of, oh, this always happens to me. It's always me that gets upset. It's always da 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 and Oh, there's never any hope for us. And then as soon as we go back to the incident that created that upset, suddenly it's like, oh, wow, I've been doing that for this amount of years or, or this many days, or I've been doing this with all my customers. And suddenly, as soon as we find that point, that sort of aha moment <laughs> of when it was created, suddenly it's like everything kind of unravels and goes, oh, wow, I can change it. There's hope for me. There's, you know, and just, I mean, in terms of listening to Kirsten, working with a patient, just in a very short space of time, suddenly that turnaround is quick. And I'm, I'm almost certain that you could, we could put money on it right now. We could, that his recovery time is going to be so much faster now than what it's been. And he's going to, because he has excitement around I'm not stuck in the past. I'm now focusing on the future and there's hope and I can make a difference. And now, as Kirsten said, he's up here in the green zone up there because suddenly he has that awareness. He's present to what created the injury. And now it's like, okay, great. I don't need to keep recreating that. I can change it because I'm aware of what I was doing. And it's the same in our minds as to the process we go through, once we identify where we have energy stuck and trapped and locked up in negative experiences, we then can change it and we can make a difference and we can move forward. So whether it's with clients or customers or whether it's with suppliers, we have the choice as to I'm aware of it, now I can change it and now I can create a future. And just like I was talking about the training venue that we've been using, now I know um, we have an event in sort of three weeks and already I've experienced a negative process from the, um, the owner of the venue. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It's like every event, it's getting more and further and further out. Like before it was two weeks, this time it's now three weeks before our event. And I, it's like, oh, well, okay, great. Well, I have a choice now. I can choose to accept that there's going to be negative processing and that's okay. And I love the venue. So it's worth the negative processing that she's going to give me, or I can go, you know what? I'm going to find something better next year. I'm looking at somewhere different and I'm going to find maybe a lesser venue, but a more positive experience that I'm going to go through without so much negative processing. So I have that choice now moving forward but I'm very much aware of what I'm going to experience in the next three weeks. And also I'm very much aware that I'm not going to go to the, the, um, the lady and, and complain and say, you know, you've treated me badly and you've given away my villa and you've done this and you've done that because why? 
when I'm negatively processing her, <laughs> she's going to negatively process me even more <laughs> and I'm going to negatively process her even more <laughs> and the, the situation is just going to get more and more chaotic, more and more like sabotaging, more and more upset and so it's way easier to go, no problem, great, thank you so much. This is not an experience I want to have, <laughs> but thank you so much and move on and, and change it so that I don't have that stress and anxiety um, moving forward. And so, and for me, I've got to look at it and say, I'm going to try and run a positive experience on her and say, hey, do you realize that I've given you business when the whole the rest of the whole world was in, was shut down <laughs> do you realize that i've been able to help you with this this and this and she's either going to say yes or no <laughs> and that's her choice but by me running a positive process on her and saying hey by the way do you realize that you you know you're not treating me that great do you realize that i'm unhappy and by me going and saying do you realize that this, that, and the next thing's happening, I now give her the option to choose to negatively process more of her clients or to shift the way she, where she's at. And so when I positively process her, she has a choice as to how she reacts. But all I'm going to do is put the truth there for her <laughs> and she can decide how she wants to handle it. She can decide either I'm a you know, she doesn't want to deal with me anymore because I put the truth there and I'm going to tell her that, you know, you're not treating your valuable or your um, clients that have been loyal to you <laughs> in the best way possible or, you know, and, and that's her choice. And when you positively process, it's one of the things we do is we make more of. We And we talk about it and we talk about the positive things that come out of it. So are you aware of some of the positive things that you've done? Are you aware of, are you talking about the positive things that are happening? So like if you have a customer that comes in and they only give you 50% of the order, are you getting excited and saying, well, it's a win that they still gave me 50% even though their business is not doing great? Or are you treating it as a negative experience? And when we start to celebrate the wins and put the positive there, more positive will arrive. More positive things will start to arrive. And when we start to push through those areas, so much like I said, Kirsten's client, I'm willing to put money on it that his recovery is going to like speed up like double because he's excited, the positive's there, he can see what he can create. So now it's so much easier for him to put the work in. It's so much easier for him to do the exercises. Why? Because the positive is there and he knows that he's not going to recreate the, the cycle that he's been moving through. So when you start to create the positive things in your business and in your life and in your relationships, more positive things will start to arrive and it will become easier and easier for you to recreate those things. Um, so an example in a relationship, when you first start out and the relationship's really positive and it's exciting and it's, uh, it's new and nothing, nothing, nothing phases two young people that are in love. It doesn't matter what, what happens, nothing phases them. And then as they start to move through the cycle, suddenly things start to irritate them, which never irritated them before. <laughs> Now they have a choice. They can put the positive in there and they can say, do you realize that this irritates me? Would you, you know, and they can start to communicate about the positive and the things that don't work for them and they can create more positive things and they can create more positivity in their relationship or they can turn that power inwards and turn it into a negative experience and like literally self-destruct and blow it all up. Um, so is this making sense to all of you? If if it is, if you can type in green zone into the chat box, that would be great. Um, 
Yeah, because that um, Fiona says green zone, Atomic says green zone, Health says green zone. So I just want to take some time and open it up to see if anybody's got any questions around being negatively pro processed and positively processed. So if you've got any questions, if you want to type them into the chat box, um, that would be great. Um, and yeah, I'd love to answer some of your questions. And and just to to share a little bit more around. You know, how do you know you're running the wrong process in your life? Well, if you've got no time, if you've got no interest, if you've got no money, if, you know, you're illness or accident prone, if, um, you know, there's drug and alcohol abuse, if there's um, a lower mood level such as anger, fear, sadness, um, tiredness, heaviness, what we know is that you're not running the right process in your life. And a lot of times it is, it's because we don't have the energy to do that because all our energy and life force particles is stuck in the past and we're not actually connecting with it. So it is important to be aware of are you running the right process and then if not, are you starting to do something to change it? Are you aware of it? And just that awareness alone is key. Once you have that awareness, then you can change it. So how says, I understand it as to be aware of what is being said to you and how we react to it. Yeah, absolutely. It is how, how are we reacting to it? Are we reacting to it in a positive manner or a negative manner? And a lot of us are not even aware. We just react. We just suddenly vomit all over people. And we sort of, you know, instead of actually taking the time to acknowledge it. And um, if I can use the example of, um, you know, I'm a mom, I have two teenage girls. And um, one of the ways that I know that I negatively process my children as I tell them they can't do something. <laughs> that is the number one way we negatively process it. You can't do that. <laughs> and um, in business with um, employees, are you negatively processing your employees and your staff by saying, well, no, you can't do that? <laughs> or are you saying, hey, explain to me what it is that you would like to do <laughs> and how could we create that? in a different way or how could we change that or how could we make it more effective um so if, if we go back to with my my girls they bring home their report card from school i have a choice i can either say what the flip's wrong with you what happened to your maths mark you only got 56 percent or i can say what happened in what happened with your maths <laughs> And I can ask them, how do, how do you feel about it? <laughs> how did that make you feel, getting a maths mark of, you know, 50-odd percent? And now I'm giving them permission to actually say how they feel and say what, what actually happened. So in business, are you asking your employees, well, what happened? <laughs> or are you saying, you know, you're so stupid. You should never have let that happen. How did you, make, you know? Are you asking them what actually happened and giving them the space to actually tell you what happened? And then you can say to them, well, that was pretty silly. <laughs> Is that something you'd like to recreate? Is that something you'd like to make happen again? Okay, great. So it's important that you give people the space to actually express how they felt. Because a lot of times people, Actually, you don't need to make them feel guilty. Trust me. Just think about yourself. When you've done something wrong, <laughs> you know, there's enough guilt there. <laughs> you don't need somebody else to make you feel guilty. Trust me, because you feel guilty enough that, you know. So when somebody actually asks you what happened, how did that make you feel, what did that create in you, and it allows you to talk about it, that is running a positive process. So Fiona says, how do you identify the incident in the past that has made you stuck there and causes you to return the loop or to rerun the loop? So the biggest thing is most of us actually know the incident because we talk about it all the time. 
So generally, when I am uh, with a client, I literally in the first five minutes, I know the incident like that <laughs> because they've generally told me the incident and they're generally talking about it regularly. Um, and so if you think of something that you talk about regularly, um, so let, let's say, um, you know, it could be, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I fell off the jungle gym and this, that, and the next thing happened. And then another time in, you know, somebody else, and you have spoken about that incident numerous times. I mean, I just know somebody like in our family, somebody will say to me, oh, you've spoken about that a lot. And as soon as I've heard somebody say, oh, you've told me that before, I've spoken about that a lot. I know that I'm stuck in that incident. I know that there's something stuck there because I keep going back there. I keep bringing it into my space. So, um, you know, often you'll hear people talk about um, a great one is, you know, when I was at school, I was on um, the high school basketball team. <laughs> you know, I did so great when I was in the high school basketball team. I did this when I was at school. I did that when I was at school. And a lot of times people are, it's not, they are stuck in a, generally a negative experience. So generally when you listen to people talk about, oh, I was so great on the basketball team at school, there was a point where they lost that. And they lost that, um, whatever it was, that winningness or, or whatever they lost, they lost something. So often school is, is great because it's a great example because people do well in their last year at school, they're winning, they um, the hockey team did great and they were on the winning hockey team. They finished school and they went to university and there was no hockey team at university. So there was a loss. So they are stuck in the, I was doing so great. Uh, you know, we won our um, X tournament at school. We won this, we won that. What I know is that they are stuck there in the loss. They don't know that there's a loss there because they're, they shift to the positive. But the minute they start talking about, oh, wow, once I, once I left school, there was no more hockey and I was so disappointed. It was a huge loss. I lost my mates. I lost this, I lost that, and this happened and that happened and blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly it all unravels and then they're not stuck there. That Those emotions are not stuck in the past. So m more often than not, people actually know the incident. They'll tell you the incident but they don't even know that that's what they're telling you. <laughs> so I, does that answer your question, Fiona? <laughs> Great. <laughs> awesome. And yeah, so if you have somebody that talks about an incident a lot um, or a specific item or a specific person or something that there's generally something there in that incident. The other thing is, something that you the opposite of that would be something that you avoid talking about altogether like if somebody says don't talk to me about that then you know <laughs> that's the same thing <laughs> they're also stuck there because they are it was too painful for them to look at it's they don't want to look at it because maybe it was you know an upset that um but generally before every upset there's a positive <laughs> there's a big positive and then a loss and so it's Generally, you find people are doing really, really well, and then somebody came and knocked out all their thunder <laughs> or something. And I'm pretty sure if Kirsten, I mean, maybe let, let's ask, I'm pretty sure the person that you, your client with his knees had a positive experience before that. Would I be correct? Before you that, would be very correct. A lot of winning, a lot of really good things <laughs> happening. Yeah. And so it's often what happens is we have a really positive experience and then there's a loss and it's that loss that we um, hold on to. So a lot of times people will get stuck in the loss and they don't want to talk about it. It's too painful for me to experience it. And when you start to actually unpack it, you'll find the loss was connected to the big positive. Um, so it, it is, it's just to, to be very aware of that is that generally there is a huge positive behind it. Um, I know I was working with a client the other day and um, they had a, 
a pretty big upset and um, right before it they, they, they actually had a loss they, they lost a family member but right before that they had the words were I had six of the best days of my life <laughs> with that person and then there was a big loss and because there was such a positive experience the losses felt so much more and then that's when they get we get stuck in that that upset and that loss instead of and it's a negative process that we run on ourselves we don't face up to the loss we don't face up to the um the upset that it caused or the emotions that and the hurt and anxiety or the fear that it caused so what happens is those emotions stay stuck with us and we every time we have uh, an experience connected to that it triggers us back into those emotions not necessarily the loss but it triggers us into the emotions of that loss so it's important to understand it's the emotions that we need to talk about not the actual incident um, and when we run those emotions and we run the negative emotions and the positive emotions because before the loss, there was a positive. So the person generally stays stuck in the negative because I don't want to go into the positive because it triggers and reminds me of the upset. <laughs> so it's important to talk about both the negative and the positive emotions that are, are there and, and share those emotions. So, um, yeah, I guess, does anybody else have any questions they would like to ask? around negative and positive processing. And um, Yvonne had said the difference between reaction or response. Yeah, and a lot of people, it is that. Um, and we react because we're not aware of actually our behavior. We react because we, we are not actually present in the moment. And a lot of times people just they're not present. They're not even aware of the other person's feelings. They're not even aware of what's happening. They just react. And then whereas responding would just be, okay, great. Tell me what happened. <laughs> what did that create? <laughs> how did that make you feel? <laughs> what mood level did that put you in? <laughs> you know, how big did that make you? <laughs> how small did that make you? And these questions sound really, really simple and basic. But they are some of the most powerful questions that you can have when you ask somebody, describe your mood level. How big are you? Why? Because it brings them into the present and makes them aware of where they're actually at. And it just connects them to right here, right now. Because when you say describe your mood level, they suddenly have to go, oh. And sometimes people, you'll ask them, I'll ask people the question five, six times. And their mood is somebody else's mood. And suddenly they realize that the, the frustration that they're feeling is not actually theirs. <laughs> the frustration came from their, you know, one of their coworkers at work. And, you know, they're not doing what they want them to do, but they're actually the frustration that they feel is the frustration from the cowork the coworker who can't actually get what they need to get done. And so once you have people describe their mood level and they realize you can you can even ask them is that mood yours <laughs> because often it's not <laughs> they went into an environment it was pretty negative they got negatively processed and they brought that negative process with them and the frustration or the anger or the irritation or the sadness or the, whatever it is and they are using it on everybody else instead and then when they realize that now they can change it and go oh no, it's not my mood. Oh, flip, it's from my mother-in-law. Oh, flip, she can keep it. <laughs> so it is that awareness of being present, being in the moment and being aware of how are you reacting, how are you responding, and then what are you wanting to create in the future? Because when you're aware of it, now you can shift it and you can create something different. So, Kirst, is there anything you would like to add before we, we finish off? Thanks, Nicole. Um, yeah, I think the, the biggest thing for me is that just realizing or being present and aware enough to realize, oh, 
this is what this person in my environment is doing to me, whether it's a positive or a negative thing. And a good thing to realize is when they're doing it positively processing you and keep those people around you and keep them close by because those are good people to have in your life. They're quite valuable and worthwhile. <laughs> and the ones who are negatively processing you, um, give yourself the space to be able to deal with that and to not take on the stuff that they're trying to put on you that, you know, maybe they don't want to feel themselves. So, yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you. And yeah, you bring up a great point is that it is often, it's not easy. Please don't get me wrong. It's not easy to be acknowledge those things. The biggest thing is to be present. When you're present with it, you can start to acknowledge it. So it's not something that's gonna click in and happen overnight. It's not something that positively processing somebody is, is gonna become easy for you overnight. It's a journey, it's a step-by-step -step process. I mean, some of us have been negatively processed for you know, 30, 40, 50 years. <laughs> it's not gonna happen overnight, but the biggest thing is become present, become aware of how do I respond to certain people. I, I mean, I know that when I move into my family, <laughs> I guarantee there's gonna be, it's a lot easier for me to get triggered into that negativity especially with us you know coming up on christmas and holidays and things like that are you aware of the reaction i mean some people as soon as you mention the word mother-in-law they're already in a bad mood <laughs> you know some people you, you know you mention different companies you mention different things they already switch into a bad mood before you even said anything you just have to mention their name and i mean i i know i've experienced it i, I had a, a client that I was dealing with and as soon as I like she'd hear my voice she's like hello and then as soon as she'd hear my voice oh and like it was kind of like just that awareness of okay I'm triggering something in this person what is it and just running a positive process ah oh, do I trigger or remind you of anyone yeah you know, you remind me of, um, you know, someone at school that was miserable and blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. Now that it's been, now that that person's aware that that's what I was triggering, I'm not going to trigger it anymore because they are aware of it. So it's running that positive process. Um, and, you know, uh, how it says, or are you that mother-in-law? Ha, ha, ha. I, I'm pretty sure I trigger a lot of people. Don't trust me. I have no idea. <laughs> people come into my space and it's like, the mood level, you can feel the mood level shift. But that's okay because I'm now in a space where I can positively process them and say, hey, what do I trigger or remind you of? You know, is there something, you know, that I could do better? Um, and it's just important that once you're aware of, when I move into that, family space am i aware of what mood level i go into when i move into that family space or if a certain customer phones me or a certain client or whatever it is or a certain business that i work with am i aware of that's what's getting triggered and nine times out of ten it's never the person it's never what we think it is <laughs> it's so if i connect with kirsten and kirsten's irritating me all the time I can guarantee you it's not Kirsten that's irritating. It's something from my past that she reminds me of that's irritating me. And so when, and, and that's why I love processing because it's just finding the truth of, oh, actually it's not Kirsten that irritates me. It's she triggers and reminds me of this, or it could be something I did or something I said before, or it could be a certain person in my space. So um it's important that you look at that and um how said i got triggered by someone and had no idea why but soon decided to let go of that feeling towards them and yeah often we don't know why we're getting triggered but i can guarantee you if you look at that person and go what do they trigger or remind me of did i do? more often than not <laughs> it's they did something that I do that I don't like. That's why I don't know what it is. <laughs> and um, so it is often, it's something we get triggered in people. We see something that we don't like in ourselves. It's a mirror of ourselves and, oh, I don't like you anymore because it reminds you of me. 
Um, so that's something else to, to just be aware of is that we do trigger ourselves into our own stuff and we trigger ourselves back into to past experiences. So, um, yeah, just be aware. The fact that you're aware that you got triggered, um, so it is important to know if, and if that's a behavior that you see in um, other people that you don't like or you, you've done yourself, just be aware of it. What mood level does that behavior put me in? What what do I like about it? What don't I like about it? And and kind of just talk through it and talk through the emotions of it and the moods of it. What mood level does that create? What are the consequences of that behavior? And, and they're just some simple little tools and techniques that you can use to sort of de-access yourself and go, okay, so yeah, that person puts me in a bad mood. Okay, well, what are the consequences of that? Oh, well, I'm a miserable, grumpy old, miserable sod the rest of the day. Okay, great. Well, I don't want a con I don't want that consequence. Okay, good. Now I can change it. But it the biggest thing it starts with that awareness. So yeah, just be aware. Be aware of your mood level. Be aware of how you are processing the people around you, because when you process the people around you in a positive way, you will pull more positivity into your space. Those people will want to keep coming back. And you will be able to create great teams, great businesses. You'll start to run the right processes in your businesses. You'll start to create more money. You'll start to create more success. And you'll start to create the right things in your life. So if any of you would like more information, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, the email address is um, nicole at uncoveringgreatness.co.za or info at uncoveringgreatness.co.za. We have um, a platform called Entrepreneur Hangout, and that is a really great space where you can start to hang out and positively process yourself in your business and in the things around you. So, you know, if you want a positive space, you know, feel free to reach out to us, connect to us, find out more about Entrepreneur Hangout. We have it. Um, some free stuff and some paid stuff. But the biggest thing is it is a safe space where you can go and start to positively process yourself and use it to positively process your business, positively process your relationships. So we'd love for you to join us. We will be back here next week, Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Um, it's been great having each one of you on the call today. If you are watching on Facebook and would like more information, please type information into the, the chat box on Facebook. But thank you all for investing in yourselves. Well done for investing in yourself, investing in the time. And yeah, we look forward to seeing you all back here next week. So thank you so much and have a green zone week. <laughs>